Hi there. Welcome to the Friendly Filmmaking YouTube channel once again. My name is Bryce L. Tomlinson from NewDepthMedia.com and today I'm going to talk to you about a great little video monitor system that I have put together and it's basically it's my kit. I just want to show you what's in it and how I put it together. Before I do that, I want to encourage you to check out the Friendly Filmmaking Facebook group right here at FriendlyFilmmaking.info. It's right on the end of my finger. Right there, we've got a bunch of great career filmmakers and amateur filmmakers and DIYers there that are ready to share information with you, answering questions and asking questions. And we just share a lot of knowledge. A lot of the stuff that you'll see me impart here, stuff that I learned from people there and that we've shared back and forth. Uh, hopefully, as you're watching these videos, you're gonna see that it, they get better and better, and that's because of knowledge that we've shared back and forth in the groups and in the forums online, and the Friendly Filmmaking Group, I believe, is a really great place to go. So today, we're talking about this uh, video monitor system that I set up for my, for my Lumix GH2. And um, the Lumix GH2 has a peculiar video monitoring system, you know, outside of the uh, electronic viewfinder that we have built into it. It has both a composite output, which is like a little eighth inch stereo plug, and it also has an HDMI, mini HDMI output. Uh, the problem is that most people, they want to like plug in the composite output and they don't get any video into their monitor because the GH2 does not do live monitoring of what you're shooting currently on the composite, which is peculiar. I'm not sure why it's set up that way, but that's the way it is. If you're having a problem monitoring your video out of your GH2, maybe because you're using the uh, standard composite AV plug instead of the HDMI. So you have to go with the HDMI. The dilemma that I have is that this monitor that I'm about to show you is a composite monitor. So I'm going to show you how I solve that. So uh, right here I've got a um, Case Logic uh, satellite radio GPS case. And the cool thing that I really like about uh, this thing is that on the inside it's got like a nice uh, microfiber liner in it and it's also uh, sticky for velcro so like if you have velcro things you can uh, stick them on the inside of here and I'm going to show you uh, kind of what I have inside here. So um, here I have the uh, power supply for it and you'll notice that the, some of my stuff is kind of crammed in here right now. Uh, that's because I was kind of preparing to show you. This is the power supply that you use to charge the monitor. And before I go any further, I just want to get that out of there so that it doesn't fall out. But um, I'm using these little uh, Velcro ties that you find, you can find them at Home Depot or uh, you can buy them online for, they're really cheap. And uh, I just use this, I kind of stick it to the inside of the case so that it holds my monitor in here. And then what I'm using for my monitor is just a, uh, a Hayer and these, um, these I guess they've been rebranded. There's another brand. I'll uh, try to put some information about uh, what they've been rebranded as in the description down there. But this is an old Hayer uh, microphone, or uh, not microphone, but a monitor. And uh, it's an LCD monitor. <clears throat> it's a widescreen. It's got a little uh, flip out little um, foot down here so you can set it on a desktop. Uh, it's, it's actually a television, so it's got, it's got a TV coaxial connector and uh, I, I've never really used it as a television, but it is a, a little digital television. Um, it has a, a power supply thing here for charging it. The battery lasts a pretty good long time, although this is kind of old, so the battery is starting to wear down. And uh, there are some videos out there for how to make an extended battery for this thing, and you can, you can kind of look that up. Uh, so it also has a USB port down here, but I think that's just for updating the firmware. I haven't found any other good use for it. It's got a headphone jack so that you can monitor sound out of it. 
Um, <clears throat> I will say that I don't think that the GH2 puts its audio out to this for live monitoring. I've tried to use it for uh, listening to the sound and I don't think it comes out. So um, it has no HDMI. It has composite inputs right here and that can be a problem, but I'm going to show you how I solve that problem. Anyway, I just want to show you how nicely this sits inside this case logic uh, case here. It just sits there like it's made for it. It's a nice, hard, rigid case and it sits there like it's made for it. And you'll notice on the back of it, I have epoxied some Velcro and I'm going to show you why. So also in here, I have the uh, HDMI cable. It's a little uh, HDMI to mini HDMI cable. And um, then over here, I've got the uh, stock audio video uh, cable that came with the camera, which we never use anymore because we use the HDMI. Uh, here we've got the uh, cigarette lighter adapter that comes with the Hayer television so that you can run it in your car, you can charge it in your car. I got an extra set of audio video cables which you actually do use and this is kind of a long one. I don't need one this long for this purpose but I'm going to show you what I use it for. So the uh, one of the cool things that I love about this case is that it comes with a bunch of little Velcro attaching sticky bags and uh, this isn't all of them. Some of the other ones I showed in uh, my my Amazon basics uh, bag. So I use a lot of those for uh, batteries and cards and different things, uh, little gadgets that I have inside my uh, inside my camera bag. But in here, I've got an HDMI to composite adapter. And you'll notice that it has a USB power uh, port in the side of it. But uh, in the case, uh, in my case, I noticed that the power coming out of the camera into the HDMI is enough to power this thing. So it actually runs straight through the composite right into the uh, hair. So here I have the television and um, I've got the back of it here. And I have this Velcro also epoxy to the back of my mini HDMI adapter right there. So now I can take and plug in my HDMI cable right into the back side of this and then run my composite cables right out of here into my uh, television. Now, in this case, I probably could just use one single little yellow thing, but I think I put this together uh, back when I was first trying to set it up when I thought that I would get audio out of it. Uh, anyway, it has a PAL NTSC switch on the side of the, uh, the adapter. And uh, so I have this set up. And then what I do is I have one of these cheapo clamps and I know I've heard from a lot of people these are not very sturdy and I will say it's not very sturdy. But for this purpose, the Hayer is, is not, it's not a super heavy device and we're not going off-roading with it. We're just going to clamp it to a tripod, right? So uh, for instance, if you got your tripod on a dolly or something and you want to track it back and forth, you want to have a good size monitor that you can attach to. This is kind of cool. This little clamp also doubles as a tripod so you can also you know have your little foot here have your two feet here and you can set up your camera or something on top of it i really wouldn't trust the gh2 to this because the gh2 is a little heavier but you got a little ball joint here that makes it adjustable and uh, a lot of times i don't even use these little legs but i use this little clamp to hook up to the bottom of my monitor. So what I recommend you do is clamp this on the leg of your tripod first. And what I did with mine was I put a little bit of gaffer tape on my tripod so that it'd be a little less slippery. Because if you tighten this thing down really tight, it's probably just gonna snap. It's just plastic, it's not metal, it's not a real high-end clamp or anything. But the ball joint makes it really useful because you can take this thing and set it up on your tripod like this 
and then you put your Hayer monitor right in the end. Now some of these monitors, they came with uh, different threads. I think what it is, is I think it was six millimeter 1.0 threads, uh, metric threads. So you may have to tap it for quarter 20, which is what I had to do. Not a big deal if, uh, I mean, the tap is kind of expensive, but it, it, it's a good thing to have one of those taps anyway. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's gonna come in handy in the future. Anyway, you clamp this onto your tripod like this, and then you can simply loosen up this little uh, ball joint here. And uh, let's see if I can loosen it. Seems to be kind of in there. There we go. Loosen it up there. And now you have a monitor that sits nice and tightly on your tripod. Doesn't cost much money to get one of these clamps and these things, I think you can get them for around 50 bucks. Uh, these uh, little HDMI connector things are super cheap. Anyway, you can have a little system like this and even if you're not using the Hayer monitor, if you have something that has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom of it, this is a real easy, cheap way to mount it onto your tripod or onto your rig if you don't have another way to fasten it on there. Anyway, this is the system that I use for monitoring on my Linux GH2. And I use a little composite thing uh, plugged into there and it makes it real simple. And then having this uh, case logic case uh, is a real great thing. I found this on clearance. You can find these uh, new for about 20 bucks and you can find them used for about 10 bucks and I'll provide links down in the description for everything that I've talked about here. I just wanted to show you my monitor system for my Lumix GH2 and how I hook it up. Anyway, I hope this has been useful to you and I hope that uh, you will join us on the Friendly Filmmaking Facebook group right here on my finger. Right there. Make sure you click subscribe. See you later. Bye-bye.